Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF, thank God it's Friday, we have a full episode for you today, I hope you're doing well. Um, I had a great week on Wednesday, I met up with my good friend Andrew over from the Bronx. Andrew, you remember, he, uh, um, you remember I did this motor a little while back, it was a dental lathe, the Red Wing motor. Well, Andrew contacted me, says, uh, are you interested in the trade? I was like, oh, absolutely, and I told you I would tell you what this trade was. Well, what it was was a, a beautiful fire hydrant. I went over to meet Andrew, who's a property manager for a huge commercial building in the Bronx. And what a fantastic guy. Absolutely fantastic guy. We had a blast talking about all the things we have in common and whatnot. And, uh, and uh, so now I have three fire hydrants. One I got from last year. Uh, at the uh, Elephant Trunk one, I got from Brian O'Hare, who found a New York City one, and now one from and my buddy Andrew. Andrew, thank you so much for that. And uh, we got, like I said, a full episode today. Let's get right to it. Okay, uh, what we're going to be talking about now is a what's called a Variac or a variable transform. A lot of you have seen this on my bench or seen me use it and, and, and asked me, what exactly is it? You know, it's first of all, it's a cool looking item. And you might have seen one of these in vintage electronic catalogs or something like that. And you're wondering, what, what is it? What does it do? What this is, it's called the Variac. But in rea reality, Variac is a trade name for a company uh, like Band-Aid is for the adhesive strip. Uh, this is a variable transformer, and all that means is that when the power comes in off the street, it could range anywhere between 110 volts and 125 volts. You know, it can go anywhere in between there when you're getting it from your outlet that comes from the street. However, this here will take that power, and you could regulate it from 0 volts AC all the way up to 130, some 140 volts AC. You can, and with this little knob here, you could vary it. So what it is, it's a, it's a basically a transformer that's variable. Now, you can see here, all it's made up of, it's very heavy because it's an iron core wrapped up with copper. And you can see it here, it's got a voltage meter to tell you what the volts are, two outlets, a fuse, and power. Now, why would you need something like this? For me, with the electronics that I do, especially if you have like an old-time radio, if you're going to power up an old-time radio when you plug it in, that surge of current going into the radio could damage the old capacitors and old electronics in the radio. So a lot of times with our old radios, you want to power them up very slowly so that the capacitors get the charge that they need slowly without, you know, breaking them or busting them. So that's where they come in hand. Also, you know, I collect old light bulbs. With old light bulbs, you want to power them up slowly because you remember with the old light, not the LED ones, but with the old incandescent lights, nine times out of 10, when you turn the light on, that's when the light would blow. It's that surge of current going in there. Um, there's a lot of other things. If you want it to power, so if you buy something that's 40 or 60 volts AC, how are you going to do it? So this, you get a Variac, and I could tune it down to 60 volts and run whatever I have. So there's a, a lot of reasons that a sh somebody like me would have something like this. The problem is, when I brought this down here to use in my basement, now when I was using this upstairs, it was fine. When I brought it downstairs to use it in my basement, every time I went to turn this on, because look, I'm only, what, maybe uh, five feet from the electrical panel, there's only when I went to turn this on, it would sh it would blow the circuit breaker. So as soon as I turned this on, within a millisecond, the circuit breaker would pop, and I was like, "What the heck is going on?" I couldn't understand it. So after doing a lot of research and uh, talking to uh, Mike, small engine mechanic, and a few other people that you know have knowledge on this, I believe what was happening was something called inrush, and what that means is. There's a big trend. This is a big coil in here that has to fill up with power. So when I turn this on, the surge of electricity to fill up, it's like pouring a bucket, you know, like a cup into a bucket. It, it goes in so quick that it was tripping the breaker. It wouldn't trip the fuse because I also have a, a fuse. It didn't trip the fuse, but only the breaker. And it wouldn't trip this fuse because the breaker... The way breakers work, if <clears throat> if a lot of power goes through it quickly, it thinks it's like there's a problem and it it snaps. So, 
Anyway, you can get a special type of breaker that they call like a slow blow, like a slow blow fuse. They have slow blow breakers, but I didn't want to go that route because I have all that. So what I made, check this out. Now I made this just to power up the Variac, although it has a lot of uses. And what this is called, it's called a current limiting device or a dim bulb tester. They've been using this for years as a uh, safety protocol. Well, they have a bunch of different names for them. And basically what this is, you can see here, made from spare parts. It's got the outlet here. And um, I got a bulb here with a porcelain base and two switches. This is a bypass and this is a regular on off. Let me show you how this now, is made. Now to make this, basically every you've seen one of these before. It's a regular plug. And this is obviously for people in the United States with 110 volts, uh, not for my buddies overseas. But uh, we have a three prong plug here. It looks like this. And those three prongs, there's a hot lead, a neutral, and a ground. The bottom one is the ground. The wide one is the neutral. And the smaller blade is the hot. Now, basically what I did is I took the line and I separated the three. I ran the ground all the way to the socket, to the ground part of the socket. I took the neutral, ran it all the way to the neutral side, which is the longer blade of the, of the plug. And I took the hot and I came up here and I put a switch. That's this switch here. See, that's the, okay. So I put one switch there. That's so I can turn on and off. Then I ran it to the bulb. You see the bulb with the uh, porcelain base and the hot is separated. Now, and then I ran that to the outlet. Now, and I put another switch here as a bypass so I could bypass this bulb. Now, for those of you wondering, when you light up a light bulb, a regular light bulb, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, basically, if you had a plug with two wires, you would take one wire going to the side of the plug. Now, here's an adapter on here, but I'll take that off. You could take a wire and go to the side here, and then another wire going to the bottom here, okay? Now, there's, uh, you, because the, uh, this is just a bulb, an incandescent bulb, not an LED bulb, just uh, is basically a resistor that's just a filament that get, glows. Um, you could switch these lines. You could put this line to here, this line to here. Either way, it'll light up. That's called running it direct. Now, if you wanted to run more than one bulb, like over here in this uh, diagram, you could take your plug... And then you could split the wires and run one wire again to the side and split this wire and one, run one to each center conductor. Now, the reason you would do it like this is because if one bulb burnt out, the other one would still work. That's called running this in parallel. OK, and that's remember, if you remember the old Christmas lights, if one bulb went out and the whole string would go out, that's because they were run in what's called series. Now, this is how they run in series. Series is when, if you take the two lines of the, of the uh, power cord, and I took one line, went to the side of here, and then I went for, uh, took a jumper lead and went from the middle connector to the side of here, took another jumper lead, the middle connector. This is called in series. Now, you can see what's happening is the power of the plug is going into the bulb here through the filament back down through here into the side through the filament and that's how it's going this is fine unless one bulb burns out if one bulb burns out they all go out because it breaks the chain the power so basically what i did with this limiter is i put a, a bulb in line so that instead of all that power getting rushed into the variac here now it has to go through the bulb first and then go into the variac so it slows it down and it does you don't get what's called inrush. The reason that a lot of guys make these for their shop is because this is a, a, a tester uh, and a safety uh, apparatus and I'll show you why. Let's say, uh, you know, when I find something in the garbage, I don't know if there's something wrong. It could be a short, like a fan or something. Now, if I plug this into here, and there's a short in the fan, this will protect it from blowing a circuit or making sparks. You know how it works, right? So let me give you an example of why this is so interesting. I'm going to turn it on here. Now it's on. It's activated. Now this is a plug. And what I did is I took the plug and I took the two leads and, and twisted them together. 
Now, normally, you're looking at this and going, uh-oh, that could be a problem. If I plug this into a regular outlet, what would happen? There'd be sparks, you'd hear a big bang, and I'd blow a circuit breaker or a fuse or something like that. But let me show you what happens when I plug it into this device here. You ready? Here we go. Boom. It just lights the light bulb because all it's doing, because we just broke the hot lead, it's creating a circuit. That's the beauty of it. But it'll still power uh, a regular light bulb or something like, or a fan or something like that, like this, you see? It'll power the light bulb. So you say, wow, that's interesting. And that is because, again, this is a safety device and that's why a lot of people use it. But I had to do it to get my Variac on. Let me show you the Variac. Okay, now here's the Variac plugged in. I'll turn it on. You can see it turns on nicely. Normally, that would have blew the circuit, but it turns on nicely. And let me show you what the Variac does. Now, let's say I have this light bulb and I want to power it up slowly. I plug it into here. And now with this knob, let me zoom out so you can see it. With this knob here, I could bring up the voltage. Here we have, well, here we have about 40 volts. Here we have uh, 50, 60, 70, 80. This is a 100 watt light bulb. 95, 100 watt, 100 volts. And that's about 110. That's where you would want to run this. And you can see how that works. It's a variable a transformer. And again, why I would use you this. You remember this old bulb, bulb I picked up at, uh, at Elephant Trunk? You know, this projector lamp. You can see it's 150 watt, 120 volt bulb. But now if I wanted to test this out, really I could just take this and plug it into an outlet, but that surge could blow the bulb. This is an antique bulb. I don't want to blow this bulb. So what you do is you turn the power down on the Variac. I plug it into here like this. And there we go. Plug it into here. And then what I'll do is I'll bring the power up slowly and that'll tell me if this bulb works and you can see here it's starting to light up which means that this bulb works fine okay and there we go i'm at uh this is 80 now 90 volts so that's how you would check a bulb without taking a chance and blowing it and uh that's why i use a variac and i love them and i use them in the shop but and that's that cool dim bulb tester or current limiting device that I made just to power up my Variac. Now, the reason I was going through this whole thing and trying to get the Variac up is because a Variac is another good thing that you control. You can control something like this, like this heater. You know, this heater had no positions on it. It was on or off. But let's say you didn't want it as hot as it normally goes at full power. You can turn it down with the Variac. So that's another reason. But a lot of you wanted to see this done. This is a vintage electric heater that I picked up uh, for five dollars at uh, Elephant Trunk, and you can see the condition it's in. But a lot of you wanted to see it done, uh, cleaned up, or just see it working, or whatever. So let's do that. I don't. I'm not going to take it too far with with going up. Maybe I'll just polish this up, leave it original. But we'll see what we can do. Uh, let's get that done started. Now, what's beautiful about this piece is the absolute simplicity of this heater unit. And you can see what it is. Basically, it is just a socket, porcelain around here, a co uh, socket here, porcelain cap that tight tightens the socket onto the reflector. This bulb here, these bulbs were heater bulbs. And I had a buddy of mine, and uh, he just passed away recently, Bobby Kanicki. He used to work for Eagle and uh, Eagle Electric and a lot of they used to make these. And what this is, this is like nichrome wire wrapped around a ceramic base. It's very simple. There's nothing to it. Uh, but what happens is just like a light bulb, when you plug this in, this will is a resistor and it'll, it'll build up heat. So uh, you can see how simple that they sold these replacement if you should break them or whatever. Had a cast base. You can see here cast iron base, the reflector and a little cover it was just beautifully simple okay we got the uh remove the rust off of here using a wire brush and but i see a little copper plating and probably probably some kind of chromium plating or something and copper plated first so it adheres better but uh what we have to do is we have to make this somewhat reflective now you could paint this with a high heat paint the problem being uh 
you know, it's it's a lot of heat on here and you'd really, it, you have a chance of bubbling it up. So I'd much rather take this down to some kind of reflective finish. So we'll see what we can do, trying different things. Nothing beats a little jeweling. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this vintage heater looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Let's take a look at how pretty this came out. How again, uh, I had to do the uh, the jeweling back here because of the the condition of the rear reflector, but that really adds to it, doesn't it? It adds to just the beauty of this fit. I left everything, all the original paint. This is the original Japaning with the base, the silver on the bottom. I even left the back here. There's a few scratches on it, but I polished it out. It's still nice. You know, I can live with that. Cord is in great shape. Let's try it out and see how it works because it sure looks pretty, don't it? Now to operate this, I'm going to use what's called a kilowatt. A kilowatt is a, a measuring device for a current coming in and going out into an appliance. You can see here we have 122 volts coming in off the street. I'm going to plug this in now. Okay, there we go. We plugged it in. We're going to hit wattage. And you can see we're drawing uh, 684 watts. You can see that? 682 watts. There we go. 680 watts. Now go to amperage. It shows you 5.6 amps. Okay, this is checks the Hertz. You could check the Hertz here at 59.9. We should be at 60, very close. And uh, here we go, 680 watts. And you can see now this is starting to uh, glow slowly. I'm going to come back when the uh, coils heat up. It takes about a minute and I'll come back. Okay, we've been about two minutes and as this gets warmer, it becomes a little more efficient. We're down to about 650 watts on the kilowatt. You could see here, it is uh, getting, I guess after about 10 minutes, that'll be all cherry red that, but isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a nice, uh, this is just a sweet fan, especially with that jeweling and it really adds to it. Now the ones I like obviously had the copper background, but I just haven't found one of them yet, especially at $5, right? Okay, so in closing, there we have a current limiting device, homemade, and we also have our Variac that we uh, demonstrated, the uh, kilowatt, and of course, the heater that you found interesting and wanted to see semi-restored, and, and uh, I think it came out really good. Hope you enjoyed today's program, and hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. Take care now. Bye-bye.